The chieftaincy dispute that erupted in the Patinga community of uh, Gushil municipality on Friday, January 24, 2020, has triggered the abandoning of classrooms uh, by pupils. Uh, students and teachers, the pupils and students of the EA primary and junior high schools and uh, Barzon primary and junior high schools on Monday uh, 27 were nowhere close to their classrooms. The uh, Gulail uh, primary and uh, Pisiga uh, primary were no different as those of these school blocks remained shut. Though doors of the EA primary and junior high schools were widely opened at the time of filing our report, no single pupil or student was in any of these classrooms. Teachers were nowhere to be found. The decision to abandon the classrooms are solely uh, that of the pupils and students and teachers, most of whom are trained teachers and posted by the Ghana Education Service. The assembly man for the uh, Patinga electoral area, Adam Hudu, says he has no idea when mothers uh, who uh, fled with their children will return, but is optimistic uh, his efforts to get the pupils, students and teachers to return to the classroom will yield some positive results. Let's get on to the telephone lines. Uh, we do have the assembly man uh, joining us uh, for some update. Good afternoon, sir, and thank you very much uh, for your time. So what's the current situation uh, with uh, the community, considering that all the pupils, we're told, are not in school today? Mm, currently, <coughs> frankly, the schools are closed now, as I'm speaking today, because today there's no schools. Children couldn't go to school because of the conflict that happened these two parents who this past two days. And if we look at from yesterday five to six, when the military and police were deployed to the uh, community, now the situation is now uh, uh, silence and everybody is moving up and down. But uh, the women and community, because they are already run to nearby communities. That is why today the schools are closed and the masses too cannot go to school because there are no students around to go to school. Right, so, so uh, I want to touch on the security situation. You just uh, mentioned that the military and police have been deployed in the community. I want to know the extent of deployment. Are they all over in the streets or marketplaces? Tell me exactly where these military and police officers have been deployed. Uh, the military and the police, uh, there are many. There are many. I, I don't know the number of uh, military and police. I don't know the total number, but they are not. Uh, so there are many, and I hope I hear that uh, that some are still coming. Mm. Some are still coming to join the others right. who arrived yesterday. Right. So, so I want to have yeah. a fair idea also uh, how all of this started and. Uh, you know, and how, whether you feel from your your perspective as an assemblyman, whether you feel that it is now safe for people to go about their normal duties, including students going to school. Mm, I was happy, uh, uh, that is why we are praying for, for uh, everybody to come home and do their activity, their home activities, and the students also come home and continue their education as it goes, uh, already uh, goes. And uh, because of that, uh, the military commander even called call me and said, we should try our possible best and let the information cover those who are outside scared to come home so that the uh, uh, schools and their home activities and their business can still can start. No, but, 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 the, but the point I'm making, Honorable, uh, the point I'm making is that uh, the conflict started. I want to hear from you how it started and whether you think that the conditions that led to the start of the conflict are no longer there because I'm sure people who, who want to return to normal, uh, normal activities want to be sure that the conditions are safe for them to do so. Mm, no, but, uh, as I'm speaking now, the condition has uh, have ceased. 
because the security, they are there too. They are there in the chief palace and the regent palace, and some are patrolling. But that patrol doesn't mean that if they come across anyone, they will hamper or they will temper on you. No, they will even greet you and say hi to you because they want peace to come as it, it is at the normal time. Mm. So will you say that uh, the, the situation is stable? Inshallah, now the situation is stable. The situation is stable because uh, you can move from one, one area to another. Even people today, I can see that the food vendors are start sell, selling and stores are open. But if you look at two days ago, that thing, it wasn't. But now today, I can see that some food vendors start selling and uh, some of the stores are open. And that is why I said now this right. uh, situation is now uh, normal. Coming uh, normal. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, sir, for joining us. That's the assemblyman for the Patinga area. Uh, you heard they're telling us uh, that the situation is normal uh, following the refusal of students and teachers to go to school for fear of their lives. Let's get to the other telephone lines and speak with Adam Bona, security analyst. Ah, Adam Bona is uh, joining us on Skype uh, now, so he's, he's, he can hear me. Uh, Mr. Bona, thank you very much. So I'm, I'm sure that you must be extremely worried about the uh, situation in Patinga, where we're told now that children have refused to go to school and teachers have also refused to be in the classroom for fear of their lives. I need you to uh, give me your initial reactions to this uh, kind of situation which, uh, I mean, are becoming a little more too frequent in the northern part of our country. Well, yes, thank you very much. If you can hear me, good afternoon to your mm -hmm. viewers. Uh, quite worrying, if, if I may say so, because uh, one of the things uh, some of us have always spoken about, I have spoken about, has to do with our inability to resolve conflicts and ensure that all feuding parties understand the fact that uh, uh, whatever happened has been resolved amicably and it's not supposed to probably uh, take place again. But unfortunately, if you look at especially the, I mean, the, the territory, I mean, or conflicts within the country, usually what happens, I, I heard you speak to, I don't know who he was, he was speaking to somebody who said the, the situation uh, it is, uh, has normalized or tension is uh, now reduced. But unfortunately, I'm sure that uh, over a period, the situation would have, as if it's resolved, but it won't take long again. You were making reference to the assemblyman who spoke and is appealing to teachers and students and pupils to return to school as well as community members to get back to their normal activity. And I was concerned because he, there were no assurances that the situation has normalized. You were making reference to that. Yes, basically what I'm saying is that the person you spoke to is obviously not the chairman of the regional security council. Mm -hmm. That person is obviously not the national security minister. That person is not the IGP. But this person is assuring uh, citizens or people, indigents around the area who have left out of fear to come back. What is the, sure, what is the guarantee or the assurance that when they come back, whatever started this whole conflict and someone dying and others uh, getting injuries, including a military officer, would not come back again. And so mine is that, uh, I mean, for this type of conflict, usually it's almost as if it's gone, but we don't deal with them the way we should deal with them. Mm. And so it doesn't take too long, and it comes up again. Uh, we've had Bole, we've had, there are several communities which probably have suffered in this same fate, mm. and you don't hear of them because probably uh, the issue has not, uh, the feuding parties are arresting and they might come back again. So national security should put in more measures. Where are the intelligence officers who work within the national security? Why did they not pick up intelligence with regards to a, a substantive chief passing and therefore enskinment of a new chief is likely to bring conflict? And so for me, I rather would want to hear probably from the security ministers 
and those who are in charge of security. But hearing from an assembly member, assuring members to go back, I mean, I don't see how the role, even though the role of the assembly, uh, assembly members are very important, they are not in charge of the various security mm -hmm. councils. So we've got to be very careful mm -hmm. who is okay. speaking and assuring indigents to come back to the community because the situation has normalized. So, so do, you, do I get the impression from you that you blame uh, system failures by the security agencies for this? I mean, you make uh, clear reference to the fact that if intelligence had picked up the death and re in the instatement of a skin, this wouldn't have been the case. You get the sense that this is solely uh, to be blamed on the security agencies? Well, it's to, I mean, all agencies, including the security agencies, but you see a significant, I mean, a significant to, enough to say the security agencies must take, you know, uh, a huge chunk of the, the blame because then they have been cloaked with powers. We, they are supposed to be making sure that uh, our security is intact. And so when a chief dies, it doesn't matter if the chief died in an area that is not in dispute they are supposed to ensure that they monitor if it's going to be instalment or it's going to be enskinment. They are supposed to monitor and make sure that they have their ears and men on the ground. But unfortunately, they wait for incidents like this to happen, for people to die before they respond. You know, wasting people, people dying, and wasting state resources in terms of reacting. And so for me, I don't know what the national security, over the, over the period, I have complained of the, the kind of the, the lukewarm attitude from the national security officers we have in this country. This should be put squarely, you know, at the doorstep of national security. Once the substantive chief died, somebody should have known that there's a potential, uh, uh, we, we have a, a conflict probably going to happen. But they didn't look at it. You don't have to probably be within national security to, to know that when chiefs die in this country, chances are that conflict could happen. And so they should have their ears and men on the ground to make sure that things don't go out of hand. Right, uh, Mr. Mr. Even Adam though Bonner. the chiefs can, we, we have to also be blaming the chiefs and the feuding parties. Right, Mr. Bonner, we're grateful for your time. Thank you extremely. Adam Bonner is a security analyst.